What's up, a cinema show gun here, and of course, while I'm on vacation, the laundries finally get the courage to speak up. However, they aren't speaking up themselves, they're speaking out through their lawyers, and they're defending their silence throughout this whole entire situation. And of course, they would have the audacity for the first time that we kind of hear from them, even though technically we're still not hearing from them, this is just like a message about how they feel that's conveyed through their lawyers. And speaking of lawyers, they have another lawyer now as well. We'll get to that in a moment. But of course, the first thing they say will be defending themselves. You know, maybe acknowledge that this is a really sad situation first. Maybe acknowledge the fact that you lost your child in this situation as well. Not just the Batidos. But no, the first thing you do, the first time we hear from you, which we're still not technically hearing from you, is you defending your silence throughout all of this. Now, Brian Laundrie's parents defend their silence throughout Gabby Batito's disappearance, and now they have filed a, what is this called? Holy moly. They're basically filing um, to get this whole lawsuit thrown out of court. A motion to dismiss. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry, it escaped my brain. But they updated the motion to dismiss. Now, we know the Batidos filed a lawsuit. The laundries tried to get that dismissed, and then the judge was like, hey, you need to come back. You need to make some corrections to this lawsuit, and then we'll see if this one holds up better. And now they're trying to get this one dismissed as well, and it's not looking that great for the Petitos at this moment. It's looking like this may get dismissed as well, and I hate to say that. You all know how invested I am in this case. I know a lot of you all are really invested in this case as well. And when we heard that the lawsuit was going to happen, when we heard that it would be, you know, a jury, the ju a jury would be involved, so they would have to show up in person. It was like a, a dream come true in the midst of a nightmare. You know what I mean? Like the situation's already horrific and sad enough, but at the very least, we thought we would get a moment to where we could hold the laundries accountable. The parents of Brian Laundrie are defending their decision to remain silent throughout Gabby Petito's disappearance, saying that it is what most people would and should do in such a situation. This is what most people should and would do in such a situation. Meaning, hey, if your kid goes and kills someone else's kid, you should be quiet about it. And you would be quiet about it. And you know what? A lot of you parents out there, you would. A lot of the people that were invested in this Gabby Petito case, I feel like if you were in their shoes, a lot of you all would do the same thing to protect your son or your daughter or what have you. I've seen a lot of people say that they wouldn't, but let's be honest here. I think a lot of people would. But that doesn't mean that we can't look at the laundries like villains. Of course we can the comments were made in a motion to dismiss filing in response to a lawsuit from Petito's parents, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, who were suing the laundries for intentional infliction of emotional distress. The Petitos claimed that Roberta and Christopher Laundrie knew their daughter had been killed but kept the information to themselves and even tried to help their son flee the country. Now, the updated motion to dismiss that was filed today by the laundry's lawyer, P. Matthew Luca, defended the laundry silence, saying it is their constitutional right. The laundry's decision to exercise their constitutional rights to silence, privacy, and counsel, and to have their attorneys speak for them under such trying circumstances and media pressure could not be further from conduct that is extreme or goes beyond all bounds of decency. So in the Batito's lawsuit, they claim that the laundries have conduct that goes beyond all bounds of decency. 
what their lawyer is saying, the laundry's lawyer is saying they just, you know, practice their freedom of basically not saying any nothing, but not saying anything, just being quiet. Legally, they did not have to say anything. Although I wonder, you know, it's a tight rope here. Legally, they don't have to say anything, but at the same time, at what point are you like harboring a fugitive and like hiding a fugitive from the law? So I feel like we're on a slippery slope here. But at the same time, I kind of understand what he's saying. Like they aren't legally obligated to have to speak. Although we all feel like they're morally obligated to do so legally, that's not necessarily the case. So this isn't this lawsuit isn't to figure out if the laundries are piece of shit human beings. We kind of figured that out ourselves. This is to see if legally they can be held accountable for some of this stuff. So morally, we know that they're bad. Legally, we're not so sure if this is going to hold up in a court of law. The underlying event or crime itself committed by another may be outrageous, but declining to speak or communicate about it is not. Gabby Petito's death is undoubtedly tragic and her parents deserve sympathy. However, a parent's grief, grief caused by the disappearance and ultimate loss of a child does not create a cause of action against everyone who may or may not have had information about that child's disappearance or death. So I just feel like if I knew someone that went missing right now, and I knew something about them going missing or I knew something about them getting killed, I feel like I would go to jail in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. Same for most of you all watching this. But you know, there's some people out there that just, you know, people are going to jail for parking tickets, marijuana, you name it. The laundry's skating scot-free like it's nothing. Like it's nothing, although as far as we know, I mean, as far as what I would like to believe at the very least, they knew a lot about what happened. You know what I mean? And I just feel like it more, more often than not, you would be held criminally accountable for that. But the law works in mysterious ways. Oftentimes, the law works against good people while letting bad people off. It happens all the time, too frequently if you ask me, but I'm not so sure how to feel about this news. The more I've looked into the situation, the more, I guess, pessimistic I get. Um, and I don't wanna be a negative Nancy here because I really want this lawsuit to go through. I really want the laundries to have to go and show up in court. And like I told you all, if this lawsuit does happen, you may see me in that courtroom. I'm fully planning on for at least one or two days of that trial, making my way into that courtroom. But we'll see what happens. For now, I wanna know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you on the next video.